Hello and welcome to my channel. I recently got LASIK eye surgery and so I wanted to share my experience with you guys. So I did vlog the day of my surgery and I will show that to you, but before you can get LASIK, you actually need to go in for like a pre-check so they can make sure that you're a good candidate for it, see how much of a correction you'll need, and I also vlogged a little bit of that day, so I will show that to you first. Hello and welcome back to the vlog, I'm Remy and this might be my last video with glasses. Um, today I am going to a LASIK uh, center and I'm getting my pre-appointment to see if I'm a good candidate for LASIK. I am home in South Dakota, which is why I'm all bundled up, and me and my dad had to drive like an hour this morning to get here from where they live. There was like a big winter storm last night and the roads were closed overnight, so we were kind of not even sure if we would get to come into town today because we didn't know if it would open again, but it did and we're almost there. So yeah, I'm gonna find out if it'll work for me or not. So they just put the dilation in my eye, but they said that I am a good candidate for both LASIK and PRK, I think is what it's called. There's a different one called SMILE that they said I'm not a good candidate for, but that's okay because uh, LASIK is the one that I really wanted because between that and PRK, uh, the healing time is a lot faster, so I'd be able to see normally pretty quickly and yeah, be healed pretty quickly. Uh, so that's the one that I'm going with, and I think I already have a day scheduled for a week from today. They're not really dilated just yet, they just put it in. I am home now, and by home I mean my parents' house, and wow, my eyes are huge. <laughs> So I'm just hanging out while my eyes kind of try to chill out and get back to normal because um, right now it's kind of hard to even like focus on anything, like visually focus on anything, especially if it's like close to my face. So even just like reading anything on my phone is hard and so it's very weird not being able to see um, close up because normally I'm able to see just fine close. It's just far things that I have a problem with. The visual effects will go away within the next couple hours. The eyes, I think they said, could be dilated for up to 36 hours, so I might have these huge eyes for a little while longer. <laughs> so as I said, about a week after that pre-check, I did have my surgery. I think most people have a little bit of a longer wait, but I went ahead and scheduled my surgery before I even had the pre-check because I knew I would have to go back to Texas pretty shortly, and I wanted to make sure I had time to heal before making a two-day drive back home. So now I'm going to show you the day of the surgery, and just as a warning, you will be seeing the prep to my eyes, as well as a little bit of the actual surgery, but it's not very close up on the actual surgery. You kind of just see me on a table with a weird thing above my head. So even if you're squeamish, it should be okay, but I did just want to give you a heads up anyway. So I just made it to my appointment for my surgery. Mom drove me today, um, and I'm really a little bit nervous just because it's like a laser in my eye and I'm going to be awake for it. They told me not to wear contacts for three days beforehand, which I don't really wear contacts anyway, and not to do any eye makeup today. So I did eyebrows, I did a little bit of concealer, but I didn't get it too close to my eyes. And then they did not tell me this, but I read online to not have caffeine the day of because it can make it harder to be still. So no caffeine for me today. Um, I'll probably go get some coffee after. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's do this thing. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Keep your eyes closed for me. I'm going to take some betadine swabs and clean the outside of your eyes here. Just keep those eyes closed. And when you open your eyes here, it is going to burn, okay? I'm expecting that. Go ahead and give me a couple blinks. I have to sit here with my eyes closed for, it's probably been 15 minutes or so, and I don't know how much longer it'll be till surgery, but pretty soon. When I walked in from the cold outside and I put on a mask, my glasses got all fogged up, and I realized that that was the last time I ever have to deal with fogged up glasses. How are you feeling? Um, I was nervous before, but they gave me something for that, so I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I'm gonna have some laser vision. I'm glad that I'm not sitting here alone. Anything for you. <laughs> so as you go through this, Remy, you're going to feel pressure and your vision's going to dim out. And the best thing you can do is not worry and not move. So I'll be open your eye. And here's a little eyelid hole. But right up at the light. Let your chin go up or down, hold everything 
look at the top of the green light and now the middle of it. If you keep looking at the middle of that green light, look at the top of the green light and now the middle. I'm out of surgery now. My mom is just picking up some food for us, um, and my eyes are very uncomfortable right now. The numbing things that they gave me wore off, and now I just have very, very itchy, itchy dry eyes, and it's really hard to keep them open. It feels like, like there's a magnet in my eye. Like, I can open it, but then it just goes back closed again. And they told me to not take a nap, you know, make sure I'm keeping moving my eyes, blinking. They want me to be, yeah, blinking a lot. And even though I'm wearing sunglasses, and even though it's an overcast day, it still just seems, like, too bright for me. So I've actually been sitting here with this over my eyes just to help um, make opening my eyes a little bit more tolerable. Um, but they said it'll only be like this for, like, two or three more hours, and then, um... They said that it'll be like someone flips a switch and then my eyes will be a lot less sensitive. So hopefully that'll be happening pretty soon here. We also did get coffee um, so I can have a little bit of caffeine in my system. Oh, I think that's my mom. <laughs> so I am now four days post-surgery. I did have one follow-up that I didn't record anything of, but they said that everything was healing very well. They said that I have 20-20 or a little bit better than 20-20 vision. I will say that while things are in focus, they are still a little bit blurry sometimes, occasionally, like with the healing process. It's kind of like when you're wearing glasses, but they're just like, they have a fingerprint on them. Like things are still in focus, but they're also not quite as clean looking as they could be. I don't know, I think that's the best way to describe it. But it's all just part of the healing process and my vision will just get, you know, better and clearer as I, you know, continue healing. For me, this whole process has been a little bit more complicated because I didn't do the surgery where I live. I did it about an hour away from where my parents live. I'm currently on my Christmas break from school, which for me is like a three week long break. So I did have plenty of time to get the surgery done and get recovered before driving home. But I was also very lucky because one of the top surgeons in the world for LASIK is right here in South Dakota. My brother went to him. He said he'd recently gotten to like 100,000 surgeries. So I felt very confident in my surgeon. It was easy for me to pick one. And he actually was one of the people who did like the FDA research studies before LASIK officially went on the market. So that was really cool. I don't really have advice for you to pick a surgeon in your own city just because I was lucky enough to already be familiar with mine. And I luckily had had someone in my family who had gotten LASIK done there before. But when you are picking your surgeon, definitely do your research. Definitely see if you can get recommendations from anyone you know who has gotten LASIK before, if they had a good experience or a bad experience. It provides so much peace of mind to know that your surgeon really knows what they're doing. The surgery itself for me was pretty anxiety inducing, pretty stressful. They did give me some medicine first to help with my anxiety, but even so I was pretty stressed out during. It's just such a strange feeling. They put your head under one machine and it cuts the flap and then your vision just kind of goes completely out of focus. And then they put you under the other machine and it smells like it smells like a hair dryer. It smells like slightly burnt hair when they're doing the actual laser correction. And then they put your flap back into place so that your eyes can focus again. It's just, it feels so weird. For me, for the first few hours after surgery, it felt like there was soap in my eyes. It's the best way I can describe it. It felt like there was soap in my eyes and it was so hard to keep them open because it just it kind of stung. They did tell me after surgery, don't take a nap. We want you to be blinking. We want you to be, you know, opening your eyes. And I had a hard time with that. I ended up like putting a blanket over my head and trying to like force myself to blink under the blanket because there was a lot of light sensitivity as well. I'd say after four hours maybe, my eyes felt a lot better. After the kind of sensitivity got better and I was more able to actually look around, that same day I could tell a distinct difference in my vision. Things were certainly more in focus, but I did have that like kind of cloudiness and like like I was saying before like when you have glasses on but they're a little bit dirty it's kind of I don't know how I describe it best and that has gone down a lot I still have a tiny bit of that feeling but it's certainly getting better every day now let's talk about money a little bit 
My surgery cost $5,000 for both eyes, which I think is maybe slightly above average. I did go to you know a leading person in the industry, so I'm not surprised that it's maybe a little bit above average. And then it was also another $900 for the three follow-up visits after one day, one week, and one month. I was able to use an HSA card and pay it all that way. I'm sure most places will have some sort of payment plan option if that's something that you need, but that can just kind of give you a ballpark idea of how much you'd be paying for a procedure like this. Along with that cost, at least where I went, they do include uh, touching it up, which would essentially just mean doing the surgery again. On my end, it would just be like starting over in terms of all the healing and all of that. They'd have to cut open a flap in my eye again and put me under the laser again. Now for what they're doing, it won't be starting from scratch, but I, I don't know. It's too soon for me to tell if I would need that or not but that does kind of stress me out to go under the laser again because it was just so weird feeling. If I need to do it again, I will, but I really hope that I don't have to go back and do it again because it's just, it's, it's not a fun experience. It's worth it in the long run, at least I think so, but it's not fun to do. I am grateful that I at least have the option for the touch-up. I don't think my brother needed it, so hopefully I don't either, but I guess really only time will tell. As far as the recovery goes, there are a few things that I've had to do and keep in mind. One of the things being you cannot wear any eye makeup for a week after surgery, so I obviously do have some makeup on, but just not on my eyes. That's not a huge deal for me. I don't usually wear a ton of eye makeup anyway, but it is something to just no. I did think about buying those magnetic eyelashes where it's like a magnet on both sides and you don't have to wear like eyeliner with it or anything. Um, but I ended up not doing that. Another part of the healing process is tons and tons of eye drops. So I have these medicated eye drops that I have to use four times a day. I also have just kind of like a generic saline type eye drop that I can use as much as I want. Um, they want you to use it fairly frequently to make sure your eyes are nice and moist. You also need to be very careful to not rub your eyes at all because they do cut open a flap in your eye when they're doing the surgery and so you don't want to be rubbing it and potentially messing up your healing process. So when you sleep you have to wear goggles. This was just for the first three nights so I'm done with it now thankfully. It's not very comfortable to sleep in but it's just very important that you can't be you know rubbing your eyes in your sleep or anything like that. I don't think I realized how often I rubbed my eyes until I couldn't anymore. And it's not that I rubbed my eyes a lot, it just was more than zero and I didn't really think about it before. But while you're healing, you cannot rub your eyes at all. You also have to be very careful when you shower. Um, you don't even want to get the shower water in your eyes because that's not sterile. And you definitely, definitely don't want to get any soap or shampoo or conditioner in your eyes because that could be really damaging. So make sure you have clean hair before you get LASIK so that you can, you know, hopefully not have to wash it right away because <laughs> you have to be very careful when you take a shower. I think my brother said that when he got LASIK, he actually wore the goggles in the shower as well, but I don't know that that would work quite as well with long hair. So I don't know, whatever works for you, I guess. So I'm not completely done healing yet. I still have a while of using all the eye drops. I'm still not allowed to even go swimming, but it's January, so that's not much of a concern. I hope I answered all of your questions about LASIK. If not, make sure to leave a comment and I will try to get back to you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.